Do you ever wonder when it's a good time to buy a stock? Like sometimes the price seems high, sometimes it seems low, but how do you really know? So what we're gonna do in this video, I'm gonna show you how to value a company using a discounted cash flow model. And I'll show you step by step, but you gotta watch the entire video because there's gonna be pop-ups all over the video giving you graphs, charts, more information, because it's stuff you're gonna really need to understand everything I'm showing you. So we're going to be doing Adobe. It's a computer software company, and I'm sure everybody knows Adobe, Adobe PDF, PDF Writer. It was founded in 1982. So we're going to get started with the model. So first, we're going to get the market cap, which is right here, 195.871 billion. And I'll just put that into the model. Then the stock price is up here. 406 spot 54 that's a big stock price 400 bucks for a share now we're gonna get the free cash flows and that's right here and that's the operating cash flows minus capital expenditures and you want companies that have positive free cash flow each year because that shows that they're adding value to you as the investor next is net income which is a profit and loss for a company that's on the income statement and it's right here are the numbers and I'm gonna put it into the model and the model is doing all the calculations. And last is revenue. That's the total sales for the company. And you always want to look at the numbers. And you can see free cash flow has doubled from 2016 to 2019. Such a good sign. Net income has increased also. And revenue has doubled. So these are all great signs. And it shows a company that it's improving. Now we need to figure out the discount rate. So we have to look at the capital structure of the company. Let's figure out how much interest they pay in their debt. It's right here, the interest expense at $157 million. And now we need to figure out how much debt they have. We go to the balance sheet for that, go to the liability section. And then the current debt, that's debt that's due within 12 months. And I'll put it into the spreadsheet. And then long-term debt, that's debt due after 12 months. 982 million. So most of that debt is short-term debt. That's not the best sign, but fortunately interest rates are low, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. See how much taxes they pay. The $3 billion was their income before taxes, and they paid $253 million in taxes. Even though they pay 3.8% interest on a debt, it's tax deductible, so it actually cost them 3.5%. So we need to figure out the cost of equity, and to do that, we need the beta, and that's, that's the volatility of the stock. And it's right here, the beta, 0.92, great beta. That means the stock moves a little less than the market, and that's what you want. You want a stock that's not too volatile. Now let's look at their, um, get their current assets, and we're going to go back to the balance sheet for that. And those are all assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. So current assets is 6.5 billion. And the current liabilities, that's all the debt and payables that are due within 12 months. It's right here. Current liabilities, 8.2 billion. And the equity, that's the total value of the company according to the balance sheet. It's total assets minus total liabilities. And make sure you watch those pop-ups. You're going to get a lot of valuable information on how to do calculate these ratios. We also need the EBIT, which is the operating income. That's earnings before interest and tax. And that's on the income statement. And that's your profit after running your day-to-day -day business. But it's, but it's before your interest and taxes. And that's $3.1 billion. So this company has 28% debt in a capital structure. That's not too bad. And to figure out the weighted average cost of capital, the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows, we have to combine the weight of equity and the weight of debt. And that comes up to 7.72%. And that's what we're going to apply to the future cash flows. And we estimated the future free cash flows based off of the information we input earlier. And we, we estimated four years of free cash flow. And then we, what we do is called terminal value, which is all years past year four. And we use the Gordon growth model for that. We discount those cash flows using the WAC we just calculated, and the value for the entire company is $111.6 billion. And when we divide that by 482 million shares, we get an intrinsic stock price of $231.74. And, and I didn't realize there's a website called Simply Wall Street that calculates the intrinsic value of the company. It's, it's under valuation, and they calculated $238.12 for the fair value of the company. And I'm at 
3174. That's really close to what I calculated. One. And as you can see, the stock is trading at a pretty significant premium, 75% above what it should be trading at. Now, look, let's see if it was ever 231. Uh, maybe it was a year ago or so it was trading at that price, but it's been trading at a real steep premium ever since. And why do stocks trade at such a premium? I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, the, the main reason is people just feel the company is more valuable than the financials indicate. They see the company growing and being bigger in the future. There are some companies that are making no money, that are losing money, but their stocks are going higher and higher because people see value in those companies. But the price is not based on what the company is doing financially. It's based on what the market perceives. It's based on supply and demand of the market. And the more people that want to buy a stock, the price goes higher and higher. The more people that sell a stock, the price gets lower and lower. The only way to avoid all these ups and downs in the market is just to hold the stock long term and just deal with your, your stock going down because you don't really lose money until you sell the stock. So even if it's on paper, you lost 50%, you didn't lose anything because if the stock goes way back up and you sell it, you made your money back. Let's look at their financial ratios. And this usually gives a bigger picture of the company. And their PE ratio is 66. That's a really high PE ratio. I like to see 15. That's considered a value stock, 15 or lower. That's stock price over earnings per share. That's a price to sales ratio. I like to see under 2.2. They have 17.5. That's a really high price to sales ratio. But just don't, don't ever think about ratios in a vacuum. You have to compare it to our similar companies. And we're going to do that in a little bit. Price to book ratio is 18.6. Really high price to book ratio. The current ratio is not so great either. It's under one. That just means they don't have enough liquid assets to cover the short-term liabilities. And what happens? They have to borrow money. And that's not a good thing. Fortunately, they're a big, strong company with only 28% debt, so they could handle a little more debt. Great ROE, 28%. So they're providing a great return because you're, you're, you're risking your investment. Uh, you're risking your money on, on a stock that's trading at a premium. So you deserve a higher return. And let's see that default risk. There's a 4% chance of them defaulting within 12 months. And this is my own personal calculation. And it's, it's a blend of interest coverage ratio, percent of debt, market cap, free cash flows, and current ratio. And let me show you the interest coverage ratio. That's how many times they could cover their interest payment. And their interest payment is $157 million. They could cover it 21 times. Let's compare them to their competitors which are Microsoft and Square. These are the two companies I've done DCF models for on this channel. That's why I have it on this video right now. And Microsoft has the best PE. You may think 35 is a bad PE and it sounds high, but the industry they're in, the average PE is 31. Because you can compare it to other sectors. For instance, in the financial sector, the average PE is 18. So these would look terrible but you have to compare it to the same sector. So 35 is just about average. So Adobe has a pretty weak PE ratio, even in their sector. They all have a pretty high price to sales ratio. Square is the best in that category. Microsoft is, has the best price to book, but I think that's just how the nature of this industry is. They just have really high price to books. Current ratio, Microsoft and Square are fine. Adobe is below one, which is surprising. ROE, Microsoft is the best ROE, but they all have pretty good ROEs. Debt, they're all doing okay in debt. Microsoft has the most debt, but they're all under 50%, so I think they're fine in that category. And in terms of market cap, Microsoft is by far the biggest. It's one of the biggest companies in the world. So let me know what you think of the video. Did you like it? Did you learn anything new? Thanks for watching.